This is Corey Willis with PVI, and you're listening to the Diesel Podcast. I'm Adam Blattenberg from Diesel World. This is Dan, owner of Dan's Diesel Performance. I'm Cass from Diesel Doctor of Tennessee, and you're listening to the Diesel Podcast. What is going on, Diesel Nation? We're excited to have you guys with us today on the number one diesel truck podcast on iTunes. We want to thank you guys for your continued support with reviews and messages, tags that we get on Instagram and Facebook and suggestions for guests and products and different things you want to hear about. We want to encourage you guys, if you're not following us on Instagram or Facebook, make sure and search at the Diesel Podcast and follow us on there. We post episode previews. We ask questions before we have guests on so you guys can tell us, hey, you guys are going to have Fleece Performance on, ask them about this you know, 3 pulling truck set up or about this lift pump or whatever it might be. So we want to encourage you guys to do that. Today we're going to be chatting with Fleece Performance and Freedom Racing Engines about sled pulling. So specifically, we're going to be asking questions that you guys told us you wanted the answers to on an Instagram story. So we're going to talk 3.0, work stock, tires, chassis, suspension, tons of different things. Ask the guys the questions and get the answers that you wanted. I want to encourage you to go to fleeceperformance.com for any questions that, that you might have about the products we talk about or the setups. The guys over there are more than happy to chat with you, help you set up your truck for any class that you want to race in, and be able to maximize your setup to perform how you guys want. Chase and John, it is fantastic to have you on the Diesel Podcast today, and today we're going to be going through sled pulling, how to build a, a pulling truck, and some cool things you guys are doing for Cummins Engines and in uh, the competition arena. It's good to be back with you guys. We posted up on uh, on Instagram a picture of uh, one of your pulling trucks, Chase, and people are like, you know, they wanted us to ask you a bunch of different questions, and, and I kind of wanted to, to start first with something I've seen recently that that you guys are doing with Cummins cylinder heads and ask you guys, you know, what what kind of new things or new technology or improvements have you guys been able to make in the racing scene on the Cummins heads? Well, I think the majority of our cylinder heads, you know, the development has came from the race side of it and that obviously started many years ago by breaking parts and, you know, drop a seat or two over time learn what what will stay in the head and what won't um it, what that ended up creating was a product that we could sell to the street and the end user you know something that is going to hold up going to have you know good longevity um good durability was our, our main main objective there and john has a lot of the insight on on our current best practice and what we're trying to accomplish with cylinder heads well, the biggest thing with our, our head program at Freedom is, uh, you know, we've spent countless hours working on the flow bench and, you know, translating that data into the dyno room and actually turning it into horsepower. Um, our race program has pretty much developed all of our cylinder head um, production stuff, so to speak. We've spent quite a bit of money and time over the last two years investing in, you know, the best technology and equipment we can buy to give our customers the best product we can give them, as well as put the best parts and pieces into our heads. So with that being said, we're doing a lot of the um, same techniques and using the same types of products that we use on our race heads into our production line, such as valve seats and springs and, you know, turning that kind of stuff into something that the everyday guy can kind of buy and use. So if that makes sense, we're trying to develop products based on if it lives in this kind of horsepower range, it's certainly going to live for the guy making half of that or so on and so forth. But the development stuff is probably the funnest part of the job. You know, the sky's the limit. If you can think of it and try it, as long as you have the right equipment, you know, a flow bench and a dyno, you can start really tinkering. And those are some of the funnest days I think Chase and I have at Freedom is when we can really just tune out the noise <laughs> <laughs> and make noise. <laughs> So I kind of laugh. We've got uh, Derek Rose in the house right now. He's uh, fixing his truck from the carnage last weekend. 
and it's pretty neat we've got the cylinder head off that thing right now and that's uh that thing's on its third tour it uh it was on my ucc truck what was that 20 <laughs> three years i think ago <laughs> yeah something like that well so that head you know we've got that thing apart and it's it's not any worse than it was so i'm gonna go back through and deck it firing it valve job it and throw it back on there he's headed down to the, uh, the sun coast event or hard way sun coast whatever it is and uh he'll be on the track this weekend so that's one of those things with development it's always neat to see your your big horses when they come in and they gotta have, gotta get fixed in a hurry you know you get to see what uh what they actually look like now, as far as for say the common rails and being able to have something for say like a street truck so the, the the guy may drive it every day and stuff but he's taking it to the track or, or even sled pulling with it what is there just one setup that you guys offer or is what kind of different choices does uh, the diesel you know truck guy have if he calls you up and is like you know for the cylinder head yeah for the cylinder head well it kind of depends what you know it's more application specific but what we've offer is about four or five different stages of heads and you know if a guy wants to make you know 1500 horsepower and he's gonna be drag racing it that's a different head than you know somebody who wants to make 700 horse and just needs to tow and daily drive but um the goal there is to have kind of all different levels ready in the shop and be able to offer those so they're easy and it's an easy um decision then based on what the application is so we wouldn't we wouldn't build a head that like for Derek Rose, we wouldn't put that on a street truck. Obviously, like you were saying, application based. You know, you're trying to, you know, get a head that fits fits a customer's needs. But the cool part is, like the uh, intake and exhaust seats on that race head is something that's trickled down to our street line. So they're a similar material, and you know, we know if it'll handle that kind of cylinder pressure and heat. And one of the one of the main problems with Cummins heads from the factory is the valve seats. They don't put enough press on them and they use just a really cheap seat. So from our street head, which is basically a stock reman head, all the way up through our biggest race heads, we use the same seats, um, different sizes, but we use the same seats, the same depth, the same type of press, um, same material, the whole nine. And that's something that I'm a firm believer in. You look at a head uh, off Derek Rose's engine that's been through World War One, Two, and Three, <laughs> <laughs> and it's still got the same seats in it from three years ago. I mean, that to me is uh, says a lot. And for a guy to be able to come in and buy a, you know, a stock reman head, our our Street Series head and it has that same quality built into it, that to me is a big peace of mind for me and a great selling point. You know, the customer's going to get quality. So those are the kind of things that we've tried to implement into each head that we make in Freedom is, you know, quality is a given, and we're trying to use the same technology like we talked about earlier in, you know, each and every head. That's what's so cool to see about the the product line is the the, i guess how much use and abuse that the racing products take all over the country year after year is then able to be translated into upgrades for a street truck or a daily driver where we know there's going to be a ton of you know you guys with five nines or six sevens looking for heads whether it's a you know stock-ish type application or something a little bit more and how that all translates and it kind of leads into the next part of what we really wanted to chat with you guys about which is sled pulling and i'm sure there's there's a ton of things that you guys have learned competing in that that also is translating itself into fueling upgrades and turbo upgrades and all those sorts of things but but i wanted to to ask you chase is as far as sled pulling what what does fleece performance offer? What can you guys do for the competitor? And then also for those who are you know, just getting into it or, or want to get more competitive with their trucks. 
Well, it really starts at the roots of uh, you know sled pulling, and a lot of that is is based around work stock truck pulling. Um, that's really where we cut our teeth. Um, I, I think I mentioned uh, Trevor Hole last uh, podcast. He's one of those guys that you know he's got a really stout work stock pulling truck around here in central Indiana. And John Shu from Quality Diesel Performance is another one that's just got a horse. If they pull in at the track. Most people know that uh, those guys are going to be up front and be hard to beat. <clears throat> now, you go back eight, ten years ago when we first started. That's when the Cheetah was really born. It was uh, you know based around the Duramax LBZ model, and uh, you know pulling sled pulling. That's that's what we got started in. So I really have a passion in that. Um, you know. The, the hardest part about it is that Indiana is the creme de la creme that you're going to find the best pullers in the country that are located here. You know, you got to deal with, you know, Hazel Machine, uh, Shide, and all these other guys that just, you know, that's who we looked up to growing up. And, you know, I remember someday saying, man, I'd love to be able to run with those guys. And uh, it's, it's taken a while, but uh, having a dyno and having some good customers, you know, we've got... The 30 smoothbore class, limited pro stock. That's a that's a really fun group, guys. It's a fun uh, fun class. I kind of liken it to NHRA pro stock. You know, it really comes down to the engine builder and uh, comes down to the driver. So we've uh, we, we've been very fortunate that we've had some good drivers and uh, we put a lot of effort into R and D, getting these engines to perform like they should. Um, it's one of those things, though. You can't can't sit still because as soon as you uh, catch up, you'll get passed. <laughs> so that's a uh, between work stock. There's a, a two five class that's kind of getting transitioned in what they call a two six smooth bore. They're getting rid of the map grooves, making it easier to tech these turbos because you know there's people you know like us that are you know good at making turbos. I guess I could call them cheaters or whatever you want to call them. But uh, yeah, that's the thing, you got a big map groove, you can feed a charger, a bunch of air, and it's kind of hard to tech, and they're getting sick of that. So <clears throat> the uh, 3.0 smooth bore class is a real fun one for people to watch and you know get involved with. Say, like, if someone wanted to take, you know, like a truck to you guys, can you, can you do, like, a turnkey sort of setup where... It's basically everything. Yeah, that's the the entry level class would be that work stock class, and that and you can bring we, we you know we we build three O pulling trucks. Um, they're kind of few and far between now. Uh, we we can do it. It's not something that we do a bunch of. Typically, the customers that come to us they want an engine, and we help support them with chassis. One of a lot of these guys do a lot of the work on their own. They enjoy that. Um, you know, Jordan, Jordan and Fred Kinderman come to mind when I think about that. They're a father-son team that, you know, build, they build their truck and whatnot. And I kind of put my opinion in whether they like it or not. And <laughs> they just, you know, they get an engine from us and, you know, they, they had a real good luck that shied this year. But I guess to answer your question, yeah, like work stock's the class to get started in. You know, you can buy it turbo take a stock engine start putting parts on it like injectors pump you know head studs one of our one of our street heads or our street performance heads and next thing you know you've got a truck that can run with any any of them on the weekend as far as see cummins versus duramax and even power strokes i know we last time we talked about power stroke parts that fleece performance is is, is offering and i saw on social media the um the cheetah for the uh for the six seven power stroke is how are the how are the newer trucks say in the work stock arena performing or, or what's your thoughts on you know a truck that's maybe only a couple years old that somebody wants to do this with is the are the parts and technology there that they can go be competitive as well or is it still kind of with previous model trucks where you know say the uh, five nine or you know, maybe an early 6.7 or an LBZ or something like that. I really think if someone said, hey, I, I need to, I want to get in this class, what truck do I need? 
I would sell them an 06 or an 07 59 common rail. That's the easiest to you know make power with. They're uh, you know they're just hard to beat. You can get you know a crew cab short bed, crew cab long bed. Um, you know set suspension up, get a good set of tires on it, and that thing's really gonna you know be a performer. Now Fords and uh, I don't want to hate on them, but the the Ford needs to be towing that Dodge to the pulling track. <laughs> that uh, that's the uh, <laughs> that's just my opinion. <laughs> They're just too nice. I don't know. The engine's awesome. Um, I, I'm referring to the six seven Power Stroke. I don't I'm not a big fan of the six zero or six four, but um, or seven three. But uh, you know the Chevys. They're still hard to beat. There's plenty of good runners out there. Um, but I think if you look and see who's in the top three at the end of the day, it's going to be a it's going to be a Cummins. I think the hard part for for uh, people out there is when they're looking for. A five nine and just trying to find one that isn't I, I guess it's a good platform to build i know they're out there and <clears throat> they can be found but a lot of times i'll i'll be chatting with someone or or they'll message us with a question on hey you know i want a, a fun street truck but i do want to go sled pull with it and i can't find this you know this five nine what about this duramax or you know what about a six seven cummins or you know w- different things like that and it, i think I think with the Cheetah lineup and, and how you guys have expanded it is that it it's people can have something else and still go have fun with it. Yeah, this the six seven Cummins would be my number two pick. I think when I you know when I talk about a five nine, you know you can find a four speed automatic five nine, you know that thing right there. That's that's the easiest one to get it down the track and be competitive. Um, the the sixty eight RFE and the six seven. That thing's just not very desirable for that, for uh, for that class. You know, if you had a manual, it'd be a different story. Um, I'd say my 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 favorite Duramax out of that would be LOI LBZ. Um, really, the LMM LML. I mean, I like them all, but the LBZs just seem to rip. So, yeah, uh, customer of ours, Jared Neal, he'll say he's. Uh, He's the reason where we're at today. I'll have to make him listen to this <laughs> podcast now. Um, he uh, he worked for us a while back, and he had a uh, regular cab long bed LBZ, and man, he used to just terrorize the town with that thing. It was it was honestly a couple years ahead of its time, but that was the the first Cheetah that we ever built <clears throat> was on that truck, and I think uh, I think that was back in like 08 or 09, something like that, and it, it had dual pumps and injectors and. You know, it was, I think it made 735 horse, something like that. It was a big deal back then. It's on YouTube. You can check it out. I think it, I think it was one of the first ones to get in the deep 11s. So, now the LBZ, is a, it's a good option, too. There's plenty of those trucks laying around. We had someone ask us on, uh, on uh, Instagram. We said, we're going to have the fleece guys on talk about sled pulling. They ask what kind of tires to run, and I'm sure that varies with you know which class and things like that. But say if we still focus in on that work stock area, what what kind of tires do you like? I would say, I would say, just because they've been out the longest, the BF Goodrich tires probably got the most wins out of any tire. Um, the General Grabber AT2s are are a damn good tire. Um, you know, you can also, you know, there's there's guys that you know swear by the Interco trucks. Us, I think it really boils down to what dirt you're pulling on. Um, up here in Indiana, if we got a good clay track, it's hard to beat just a good AT. And you guys travel and have traveled all over the country for racing events, things like that. How much does the tire choice change? Say if you go to Kentucky or you're in Colorado or Texas or just different different regions. Well, um, we we pretty much our customers pretty much run around here in the Midwest. So um, I will say you know Kentucky you know they've got a little more of a red clay to it. Um, typically, typically that all terrain works real well. If you get on a real sandy track and it's loose, um, those trucks just seem to work pretty good. That's an STS. 
but uh, if you have a real good biting truck or track with uh, when you got plenty of power, guys will run a uh, Nitto mud grappler. But uh, you got to have some ponies to turn those things. <laughs> and another guy that asked, and this is, this is probably going towards the the extremely competitive arena that that you had mentioned before, is what kind of transmissions are you guys running? Uh, it's probably still not a a 48 re or an allison or something like that or maybe it is i don't know but i wanted to ask you what what kind of transmission setups do you guys want to use if you're gonna go out there and compete with hazley and scheid and, and all the other guys well if it's the 30 smoothbore class it's probably going to have a, a pro fab or an scs drop box and reverser um so you know, the drop box is basically a custom transfer case that you can you know change your gear ratio and your final drive um you only have one forward gear unless you buy a box that's got uh you know a couple different gear options but uh that's typically what the serious sled puller runs um i guess to go back a few generations uh, profab made a nv4500 that had three forward ranges and uh, reverse and the nice part about that is you know you could be right up there at the line you could see that you know the, you know you, you had a you were planning on running really fast gear and then you see the track maybe a little shorter like 280 foot track instead of 300 to 310 you can slow you can go to your slower gear in your transmission and you know end up being in the right gear which that's an advantage in my eyes is gives you the option to make a quick adjustment on the fly um, that's what we've got in our Chevrolet, which it's had a Cummins in it for quite some time, but it might just have V8 in it this year. <laughs> we'll see if we get there with it. On the uh, on the work stock side, you got a five or six speed Allison or a forty eight RE. Do you see about the same longevity? Yeah, in. And the, the thing about these pulling trucks, since they're in four low, the transmissions don't see near the strain that they would in high range. So that's why you can make some of this stuff just last a lot longer. Um, I, I prefer a manual trans, but uh, on a on a Dodge, you know, you can with a four speed, you can put a manual valve body in it. You know, take off in second gear, lock converter, then grab third, which is direct. And uh, that's been a proven combo, works good. Like I said, that's one of the reasons why I like that uh, that platform so much. With uh, with UCC coming up, well, actually to step back, I, I had a chance to uh, see Derek Rose at the uh, ATS Gauntlet and check out his truck. And it he was doing something on it, and I'm looking at it on the lift, and the amount of detail and just how, I don't know, it's just it's a beautiful truck. And I just got a quick shot of the of the engine bay, <laughs> but I didn't really get to, to check it out too much. But with say like UCC coming up and race season and ODSS and all that stuff that's getting ready to start, what what are you guys really looking forward to? Either with new products that you're releasing, you know, more on the race side, or certain competitions or, or certain things that um, you know you guys changed up during you know the winter to to help your racers, to help the guys that are, you know, running your products? Um, I think that's kind of ever evolving with the engine, engine department. You know, we're always trying to make more power and, you know, be more, more competitive. But I think what I'm excited to see this year, um, you know, Derek Rose, I want to see him out and actually race, you know, UCC, it's, it's hard on a guy. I've seen, uh, seen it wear out some good people. So looking forward to, you know, seeing Derek race and um keep uh everybody needs to keep their eyes open Ben Chatty's truck's uh gonna come out swinging this year so that that pro mod's pretty slick we're getting pretty close to you know get it out and get to testing I remember watching it uh or seeing it last year and some places he took it and what it was doing it was really exciting to see that truck <laughs> yeah we were fighting a few issues last year and uh Got most of that squared away and got some new hardware that's going to allow us to uh, 
really really apply the power the way we want to and not have to worry about breaking anything so i mean obviously you can still break something but we're hoping we don't have to <laughs> but uh, one thing i did want to say you know about Derek rose any of the fans here that 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 uh you know if you want to see that truck go up and talk to him Derek's a great guy very uh very talented hard worker i don't know if you'll find uh, you know find anybody that's got as much drive and dedication as him obviously i'm gonna give the fire pump boys some credit because they've definitely got plenty of drive and dedication but uh you know Derek's Derek's a good one and he's uh he's real good for our industry on the on the engine side i did want to ask you guys a question this is just one i came up with right now but for the engines do you guys have and i'm sure there's custom ones like something going in Derek rose's truck or ben shaddy's you guys are going to build that you know just specific for them but say somebody who needs one for a work truck or for um, a street truck is it you know like a you guys have a system where they're stocked guys send in sends in the core you know then you guys ship them out the new one or how does all that work Right now, it kind of depends on the person and the build level. Um, we have a lot of people, though, that will call and they'll, you know, this is what I want to do with it. This is kind of what I want to do horsepower-wise. What do you have to offer? And then we will, you know, build. Tailor it around what yeah, they ta- want. Yeah, yeah. Kind of make it unique to them and then um, when it comes to the core thing we have engines here that we use as cores Um, some guys have cores some guys want their own engines built so as we go here we're going to start to um, try to get more stock reman engines available and ready to ship as well as a street performance type build Um, just kind of follow suit with our head program the higher end builds, pulling truck engines and racing engines, are always going to be kind of a case by case consultation yep, kind of deal. Yep, yep. You've got you've got a couple different factors in. Obviously, application and budget and things. You know, if the sky was the limit, it'd be easy. But we've got to kind of make sure that we get the right people, the right product. There's a lot of times where people will call in and they want to make way too much horsepower for what they're wanting to do or they're wanting to underbuild an engine for what they want to do or they just don't know so a lot of what we do is we spend a lot of time working with customers and educating them on our services and our products and then steering them into the right decisions as far as engine builds go because i mean let's face it uh, a guy walks in he's going to spend quite a bit of money on an engine he needs to get the right engine and that's the thing. There's there's people that think that they need 1,500 horsepower, but they've never even experienced what 800 feels like. So, you know, that's uh, that's one of those things that it's nice to have some trucks laying around that make some power. And we've got, you know, a couple over here, anywhere from 600 horse, what we consider just a good street truck to... You know, we've got some other customers that you know got some eight, nine hundred horse horsepower trucks laying around, and you know, take somebody for a ride, something like that. You know, they they're like, "How much was that? Was that like twelve hundred? You're like, "No, that's that's what eight hundred feels like." So, um, it's really important to get people into the right the the right horsepower level for what they're wanting, because you know, you, if if somebody wants twelve hundred, fifteen hundred they're just going to typically just break parts because street trucks are way harder on parts than pulling trucks ever were. You know, just like Derek Rose, his motor's smoked right now because it went through two um, input shafts that broke and the thing just revved to the moon. And uh, that's just really hard on stuff. You know, you make... I think probably one of my... the funnest parts of my job, though, is interfacing with people and being able to work through you know hey i've got this idea of i want to do this or that and turning it into a reality so i i often say we're in the business we make relationships because that's kind of what we do so it's a lot of fun that way um 
it's uh, it's cool to see the evolution of the industry as well. I'll tell you, I got involved in the diesel side of things about five years ago, and this industry has made leaps and bounds in such a short amount of time. Um, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool to see it, and it's cool to be a part of it. Um, and there's just a lot of excitement. The technology and all the things that are at everybody's fingertips and to see new parts come out every year especially um, you know between fleece and freedom here all the new product releases and things coming along it's it's pretty exciting it's a good time to be in it so that was that was something I wanted to to mention real quick is and I'm sure you guys will remember like way back in the day before there were product releases and before there were like installation instructions and good pictures. And you know, like if you go onto the fleece Instagram or Facebook or the website, there's high definition pictures of the product. Like I can look and I can see it. There's an installation um, manual. There's features and benefits. And the way as a consumer I can interact with that product and see it is way different than it used to be. And it, it even goes to what Chase was just saying about you know, somebody says, I want a 1500 horsepower truck. Well, do you know what 700 feels like or 800? Can you use any more than that? And, 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 you know, what you're doing day to day, Hey, let's go take a ride in this truck and you can feel it. And then if you want it, we can go inside and we can, you know, put the build list together. But that's, what's so cool to see. And, and I know you guys have done that from really the beginning. I remember seeing years ago, these pictures of products. I'm like, I've never seen turbo pictures like this or a CP3 picture, but it's, it, it's a testament, I think, that to the vision that you guys have and, and the way you put it together. Thanks. I think the key here is the diesel industry is playing catch up to the rest of the world. You know, you open up a Summit magazine or, you know, Hot Rod magazine, you know, everything is just done to a different level. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, there's, it, there's nothing keeping the diesel guys from doing that. And, you know, a lot's changed in five years. I mean, a lot has changed. So, you know, we want want to provide content that can help the customer understand what he's getting for, for his money. Um, You know, quality, like I said, quality is number one. Um, We want to make sure everybody's getting what they actually need. I don't want to see anybody waste their money. I mean, you know, I, I value the dollar as much as the next guy. We all work our butts off to get where we're at and, you know, like I said, quality is number one. We want uh, want everybody to give it to pay for. How close are you guys getting on the on the uh, the new shop, the new building? Ah, uh, don't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's 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 getting there. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be an action packed summer. The building's come along pretty well now. It's been um, an interesting process. The weather's been fun to deal with. Uh, and then, of course, a building of that magnitude is just there's unforeseen things that come up. And um, luckily, Braden has taken the brunt of that load. <laughs> so, but it's going to be. He retire five years earlier because of that. <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be a fun summer though. A lot of hard work. The, I'm definitely not looking forward to moving all of our uh, equipment and machines people all that stuff's gonna be it's gonna be uh a fun couple weeks but once we're in there it's really gonna open up some avenues that we didn't have before you know our biggest problem right now is we're handcuffed on space in both both buildings and for all of us to be under one roof um, logistically it just makes business 10 times easier communication 10 times easier and um, for our customers that's gonna be a win so what uh what i'm excited about at freedom we're, we've got four engine dyno cells built out so the nice part about that is like i had a duramax on there for development and i've got a customer's engine and i need a dyno so i had to pull it off the dyno um looking for in the future i'll be able to just leave whatever i'm working on development wise hooked up to that dyno and you know use the other dyno cell for the other customer so that's going to be uh pretty convenient but uh you were asking i guess what's changed since last time we've talked um the concrete is poured in the office area and the second story mezzanine and then 
the office area has been getting studded out and uh, you know they're, they're making progress there the engine build rooms or um, the masonry's up on the, the wall and they're studding it out and it's starting to look like a shop nice nice maybe we should post some like updated pictures or something <laughs> we do get asked maybe that would help we do get asked hey when you get the fleece guys on ask them about the building so that's, that's why we can ask, yeah. ask you guys about it. <laughs> when we get it done, we're going to have to have a big open house. Oh, yeah. He'd have a big garage sale first at the old shop. <laughs> God, we, there's so much. You could, you could probably build a couple pulling trucks with the stuff we got laying around. Yeah, we could. I'm guilty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to be... Uh, uh, be looking forward to seeing uh, what uh, what Derek Rose does and Ben Shaddy and the other the other guys that you work with on there, either drag racing or sled pulling trucks. Yep, we've got some we've got some exciting exciting things coming, and uh, you know Jess Hardison, um, Jason Wayman, Jason Wayman, uh, Tim Tuttle. Yep, we've got uh, now UCC is going to be interesting. Uh, the the silent killer that you know Chris Buider I mean that guy oh yeah you can't count him out no no Brett Markham I don't yeah. think they make him any better than him so yeah and then you got Justin Justin Andre is definitely going to test everything we give him yeah so far he he is he has KO'd everything I've handed him so <laughs> I have basically a theory that if I can uh keep an engine together in Justin Andre's truck, whichever truck it is, it'll last through anything. <laughs> so he is uh Justin has been one of the funnest customers I think we've worked through, but also and he knows this, one of the most challenging from yeah. the standpoint uh he he gets something for a purpose and he's gonna use it for that. So mm-hmm. but uh another guy to keep in mind it's gonna have I think a pretty good season um Ryan Milliken that uh green car was hauling ass down at uh oh lights out and then the sweet 16's coming up here so keep an eye on him and I, he got he got accepted some challenge I can't remember what, what, did you see that he has, to, yeah. he has to build a car and it's in May he has to build a car on a, like a ten thousand dollar budget or something the guys always getting into crazy stuff, but that'll be that'll be pretty neat. I I can't even I have no words for Ryan most of the time. You gotta give I, him some props. Though. He's he's playing out in the gas world, and uh, you know he hasn't been he hadn't been thrown out yet, so they've accepted him for the most part. Shoot, I got on Facebook the other day and I was some video he put up there talking a bunch of smack about a bunch of different people. I just <laughs> killing me. I mean, like I have no words. <laughs> Oh, Suncoast's been doing a pretty good job <laughs> yes. of that lately. Uh, yep. Oh, yeah, that was funny. I think the reply that all the guys had was really funny with <laughs> Vaughn and Michael Dalton and Randy Reyes. And it was pretty funny. That's, that's, that's some good stuff. Like I said, it's, it's good for the sport. I think uh, if anybody's pushing the diesel um, brand out – into the industry and really making a mark if you're Ryan. I mean, he's taking it from, mm. you know, racing diesels to the next level. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's the other thing. There's a there's a big tire shootout Ben Shaddy's involved with this year. I, he, he did yep. it last year as well. I forgot. But that's, you know, that's cool. Just branching outside of our normal little club and, uh, you know, trying to hang with the big boys. And it's taking the racing level or taking the racing to the next level um just from the actual builds of the truck you know you look at what ben has in his truck and ryan in his car and you you just look at it and it's like wow this has evolved you know this looks like a real deal race car you know yep every year they just get lighter you know more carbon fiber and faster better stronger parts. yep safer <clears throat> so yeah. fire pump boys are going to be one to watch as well that uh they had that s10 flying last year so that's going to be fun to uh, go back and forth and see uh see the record fall a couple times this summer because i'm sure it will 
Yeah, that was the uh, yep. one of the things we talked about with Greg Jolly from ODSS was how many records are going to be broken? <laughs> we're, you know, we're just taking guesses. I would not be surprised if that switches hands three to four times this year. Yeah. yeah. Which is cool. I mean, that's really pretty good. Well, I know that uh, it's a good thing for the sport. The truck owners out there, and really the enthusiasts, are really excited about what you guys are doing at Freedom and Fleece and the, the products that you guys have and how they can use them if they're, you know, say doing work stock and then a couple years down the road they want to go all in and compete at, on a, you know, a different level, you guys can still support them. And I think the commitment and the work you guys do within the racing community as well, like the guys you just talked about, um, it really helps separate fleece performance in the marketplace for working on, you know, the, the fast stuff, the competitive stuff, like, mentioned breaking parts or you know justin knocking them out is not every company wants to deal with that not every company wants to go through the growing pains and and all that stuff to get there and you guys do and so from an enthusiast perspective that's that's really cool and i think that's why the listeners you know know, listen to this podcast they want to hear you guys talk and they gravitate towards your parts yeah i think uh, something i need to hit on all these all the listeners that are listening to this all the guys we mentioned, they were all the little guy. They all started at the bottom. They all had, you know, I don't care if it was a pulling truck, a drag race car, truck. They all started somewhere. So if if you're interested in sled pulling, drag racing, reach out to us or anybody we mentioned. I mean, they'll, they'll tell you and how they got there. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's not about who you work with. You don't have to work with us only. But, you know, that whoever you want to deal with, that'll get you in the sport, get you excited about it. Obviously, if, you know, you want to pull an engine, I won't sell you one. But, uh, <laughs> you know, um, but I don't want to just sell it. I want to support you. I want to have a, you know, business relationship long term. Um, I would say a lot of the customers that I have um, were on a texting, phone call base. We talk all the time, you know. You know, like uh, Fred and Jordan Kinderman, their their family. You know, we go we go way back. So that's uh, that's something that's great. And uh, without truck pulling, that probably wouldn't have brought us together. Don't forget, diesel fans, make sure and head on over to fleeceperformance.com if you have any questions about the products that we talked about, or you want to chat with one of the guys and and get some input on you know building your your pulling truck, whether it's work stock or you know a three O, whatever you guys might might be wanting to do with your trucks. Make sure and hit them up; they're more than happy to help you. Until next time, keep the shiny side up.